fighting in Gaza and Israel continues to escalate and with it a growing number of casualties including women and children. Israel has been returning Hamas rocket fire with increased artillery fire and airstrikes. With the UN Security Council set to publicly discuss the worsening violence on Sunday, Palestine's ambassador to South Africa, Hanan Jarrah, spoke to me a little earlier this week and said that the international community needs to hold Israel to account. Ambassador Hanan Jarrah, Palestine's ambassador to South Africa, thank you very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. It's my pleasure always. Thank you for hosting us. Ambassador, it's been a very difficult time for the people of Palestine and Arab Israelis inside Israel. Uh, describe for us what has been happening and uh, what you've been hearing from the people back home. First of all, I, uh, we are devastated by the escalation uh, uh, of violence uh, uh, committed by the Israeli uh, occupying power. And unfortunately, it was all the time backed by the Israeli fanatic settlers. So you can see always that this kind of uh, um, settler uh, um, state collusion uh, when it comes to dealing with the Palestinian uh, people. The news are devastating, and uh, it started uh, with the Israeli Israeli settler, fanatic settlers trying to um, uh, forcibly displace Palestinians, uh, families living in Sheikh Jarrah, and to uproot them from their homes and uh, from their uh, neighborhood. Uh, the Israelis, of course, fanatic settlers are backed by the Israeli army, the occupying power, and they were trying to uh, in, uh, provocate and incite in, um, uh, incidents to uh, make the lives of the Palestinian uh, people. Uh, unbearable in this uh, neighborhood. This again led into also more provocation and incitement by the Israeli occupying power when it comes to the month of uh, Ramadan. Especially, you know, that Ramadan is a holy month and people go to pray in Al-Aqsa Mosque. So they were deliberately uh, inciting Palestinians uh, worshippers going to pray just like any other uh, people who might go to a church, to a synagogue or to a mosque to pray. It's only praying and they were targeting them hardly using tear gas, uh, rubber bullets. Uh, even in one day, like uh, two days ago, uh, they were targeting them inside Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is something uh, uh, amount to a war crime in according to the international uh, um, law uh, basically this is the the situation and it was then followed by these airstrikes against palestinians in in uh, gaza after hamas uh, launched some rockets uh, uh, into the israeli areas which is something that we can easily defend as uh, uh, defending ourselves it's exactly the same uh, propaganda or it's exactly the same excuse that Israel used to use to defend itself, and it is normally accepted by the international community. So we also, as Palestinians, have the right to defend ourselves in front of the Israeli aggression against our people and against our land. What do you understand about the timing of uh, the attacks on Alaska Mosque and uh, during, as you say, um, uh, the holy month of Ramadan? Um, it, it, is there anything there? Well, it's it's uh, it's not only this time. It's not only this Ramadan. It's a continuous you continuous process that always happen. It's only not only against Muslims. It against uh, Palestinians in particular, against Muslims praying in Al Aqsa and against Christians uh, celebrating and doing their prayers during the uh, last Easter in the city of Jerusalem when they were prevented from going to the uh, Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So it's about provocating and suffocating Palestinians and preventing them by all means from living their normal uh, life. The time, of course, the timing is crucial because they want to deliberately say that uh, we are sitting here to prevent you from uh, doing anything that makes you feel that you are living uh, normal. It's exactly as an any apartheid.
apartheid regime in the world trying to do with the people who oppresses. You are not allowed to live normally. Always you have to feel that you are living in an abnormal situation. Very abnormal for sure. And uh, these attacks uh, at the Asuka Mosque are widely condemned around the world. The question perhaps might be, could there have been another response uh, to Israeli aggression other than rockets? What do you expect from people living in the most, in the largest uh, open air prison, uh, uh, blockade and sieged for 13 years, uh, in which they witnessed three consecutive years by the occupied power? What do you ex expect from them um, uh, to do? Why rockets are prohibited when it comes to Palestinians defending themselves, defending them, uh, their people, while it's totally just a and understood when it comes by the internet by, by the Israeli soldiers killing uh, dozens of uh, Palestinians I do not say that it's the ultimate uh, or the best uh, response because after all as I said to you Palestinians uh, really want to live in peace in peace but also in dignity this is their right in in uh, in, in life uh, Palestinians are still under this uh, until this moment believe that they abandoned 78 percent for their from their homeland from the mandatory Palestine for the sake of having peace that's why they at the first place uh, engaged in the peace process but look at the peace process now after 27 years what would what did we get we get nothing on the contrary we are losing 30 percent of the of our 22 percent allocated for the Palestinian people for the sake of a settlement enterprise so what do you expect from us to do I, I really want to hear the the response of the international community what way are we uh, have to, what way the Palestinians need to to walk in and uh, please guide us show us even the international community the, the EU failed to get a yes from the Israeli occupation uh, occupation to make or to conduct elections in East Jerusalem and then they come to blame us this is not this is not fair I do believe so if this the current wave of uh, uh, violence continues. There are fears that uh, we could end up in a full-scale war. Is another intifada on the cards here? Well, everything is on the table. The last thing that we see, that we want as Palestinians to see, is to see our youngsters dying uh, by the Israeli uh, occupation. We want our youth uh, to live uh, in dignity, in peace, and to enjoy life, as all the youth all over uh, the world. The last thing that we want to do is to have an escalation. It's not the Palestinians who started the escalation. It's not the Palestinians who started this cycle of violence. It's the Israelis. If someone came to your house and said to you, this is my house, uh, get out of here, what your response would be? Would you be, would you be silent? Uh, would you be just give up and just go to live in a tent in front of your house just for another settler? We do not know from where did he come uh, uh, just to take it and to live in peace and dignity. Well, I, I do believe that uh, uh, the last thing that the Palestinians want to, to see is a psych another cycle of violence because it's always we, we the Palestinians, our um, young, our women, our elderly is the one who pay the price. But when it comes, maybe the Palestinians are poor, maybe the Palestinians are uh, uh, less uh, power than the Israelis, but when it comes to their right to live and to live in dignity, uh, I think we are up to it. We are an ethical revolution, an ethical uh, society, and we stand up for our principles. We never uh, started uh, a violence or an incitement incident. It's always the Israeli occupation who started it and our reactions and the, on, the international society always blame us for our reactions. Please go to the action, go to the illness, go to the occupation and then come and deal with the Palestinians.
You've mentioned the word occupation, and the last time we spoke, uh, there was the plans by Israel to uh, uh, annex more Palestinian territory in the Jordan Valley. And I just wonder, in the end, is occupation at the heart of what we're seeing even now? Of course. Uh, what, what, what do you think? I mean, uh, maybe they stopped uh, talking about uh, annexation, but on the ground, as an annexation is in process, unfortunately. And now I do believe that we need to stop using the word even occupation because it's not an, only an, an um, uh, expansionist uh, colonial uh, occupation. It turns out to be an apartheid regime, and, and Israel it turns out to be an apartheid state. And this is something that was uh, uh, widely uh, known lately by two major reports were released uh, lately. The first report was uh, released by Beit Salem, which is a, a very influential and major human rights organization inside Israel. It issued a report in March says that uh, this is an apartheid, uh, uh, stating that the whole area under the Israeli control, which comprises the state of Israel, West Bank, uh, uh, Gaza, Strip and East Jerusalem is not a democracy. It is considered an apartheid because it is a place where Israel is trying to maintain supremacy for the Jews in this area. Uh, this is one report. Another report was issued on the 27th of April and by the Human Rights uh, Watch organization. And it was entitled uh, by uh, Rishol is crossed, uh, stating that the state of Israel is an apartheid uh, regime uh, that always try to maintain uh, uh, persecution uh, and um, uh, against the, and oppression against the Palestinian uh, people. So I do believe that occupation is not enough anymore. I think it is an apartheid regime. Help us understand um, the situation in Jerusalem and these evictions. So what what is behind that, and what is the end game for Israel? The, the, the story of the evictions and the story of the Sheikh Jarrah is, is a way back to a Nakba. Uh, by the way, we are approaching a Nakba. On, on Saturday, we will be commemorating 73 years of a Nakba, which means 73 years of the Israeli occupation of Palestine in 1948. Uh, so, when, when the whole story started at a Nakba, when 750,000 Palestinians were up rooted and forcibly displaced from their uh, mandatory Palestine. Uh, some families went to a Sheikh Jarrah. They didn't go outside Palestine to be scattered in refuge all over the world like the rest. So they came into the area of a Sheikh Jarrah, which is a small neighborhood uh, uh, near Al-Aqsa uh, Mosque. They stayed there, and the Jordanian uh, government uh, and the UN at that time allowed them to stay there, and they were about to issue papers for them so that legally they are the owners of the houses and the owner of the land. Unfortunately, this did not uh, materialize in the proper uh, manner. And when Israel illegally annexed Jerusalem and occupied Jerusalem in 1967 uh, war, uh, the, the also, the families refused to be uh, uh, kicked out from their homes, and they stick to their uh, homes. Uh, since uh, 1980, when Israel issued a law uh, to annex the territory of East Jerusalem to its uh, territory, of course, it was widely condemned. Uh, then the Israeli settlers and the Israeli government started to consider these families as unwanted uh, 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 foreigners. They do not want them. They they were um, uh, they wanted to provoke uh, residency because you know the the the, um, the uh, citizens in Jerusalem even they do not have an Israeli uh, citizenship. They enjoy another kind of uh, uh, arrangement. They call it uh, like uh, Jerusalem might residency. So uh, during that time, Israel started its uh, systematic uh, um, approach of uh, uh, 
kicking out these families one family at a time, each family at some certain um, time. Of course, Israeli settlers between uh, 2008 and 2009 were able to take three homes from three Palestinian uh, families. And look at the irony. These three homes were inhabited by three families from the settlers, and the Palestinian families were just living uh, uh, across the road in tents. Can you imagine the dehumanization that Palestinians are living? So, and then by the judicial system of Israel and by the, the uh, Supreme Court uh, decision or resolution, settlers were able again to bring um, uh, orders for other five Palestinian families to be kicked out from their uh, homes. But the Palestinians decided that, no, this time it will not happen, and we will not uh, allow the Israelis to come and take our house, because it's it's basically it's our house. I mean, we have been here in 1948, and the state of Israel was established in 1949. How come? How come this uh, happened uh, to us? Uh, and this is the story. This is the story. Israel is systematically working on emptying the city of Jerusalem from inha Palestinian inhabitants, Christians and Muslims, because unfortunately it won't Jerusalem, unified Jerusalem, East and West Jerusalem, only a city for the uh, Jews. This beautiful, peaceful, uh, holy city, which was always uh, a place open for the three religions, is now turning into a place that should be only for the Jews. What? What kind of tragedy the international community is silent uh, on? This means that in a couple of years, you as a Christian, me as a Muslim, anyone from all from around the globe cannot enter this city because it's only a city for the Jews. You've mentioned the international community. Um, in South Africa this week, uh, a great number of people gathered and marched to parliament to uh, voice support for the Palestinian cause. And around the world, uh, we've seen Israeli embassies uh, uh, with protesters outside of them. And I just wonder if you are happy with the international response, because there are sadly some key players uh, like the United States, whose voice is actually quite important in this equation because of their influence. First of all, I would love to comment on the uh, protests and the support and the solidarity that uh, we as Palestinians receive here in South Africa. I can say that we are privileged and honored to receive such kind of unwavering support uh, from the different levels of uh, uh, here in South Africa. It's the government, the political parties, the uh, solidarity organizations, the grassroots organization, even from individuals. You cannot imagine, I, I receive calls every day uh, uh, from individual South Africans who really would love to support and to help Palestinians in any way. As for the international uh, community, we do rely on the people. We, re we do rely on the, um, uh, the peace-loving nations who would support the Palestinians. As for the government, of course, we, can, we cannot say that the governments are up to the level of that events that are going now in Palestine, because it's the, in the, the, the um, responsibility of the international uh, community to bring Israel accountable for its deeds, to bring Israel accountable for violating international law, that they are all uh, safeguard. Uh, it, it is uh, the international community responsibility to impose sanctions on Israel, to uh, economic, diplomatic, uh, political sanctions that that would show the seriousness of, of uh, the multilateral uh, uh, bodies uh, uh, that the international uh, community abide um, to. Uh, one major uh, issue in this uh, um, uh, in the ongoing um, events in Palestine is that the social media. I would love to salute everyone around the world, the celebrities, everyone who are sharing um, and making use in a good way of the social media platforms to give uh, the voice for the people of Palestine, the people of Palestine who just just to, to not to use anything else, but rather the social uh, um, media forums, because they are giving uh, um, the things or they are trans 
transmitting the things uh, just as they are the reality no waffles no creams and this is very much important in light of the bias that we see of the mainstream media so for all the influencers for all the uh, celebrities uh, for all the social media uh, activists we salute you and we do believe that it is time to make the needed transformation through these channels there are some people who thought that uh, Joe Biden might have a slightly different approach uh, with dealing with uh, Israel and uh, Palestine. But I suppose America has a traditional position, and that's the one that they're taking uh, and that the current administration. Yes, we can, uh, we can, we notice this and we can see this, that it's, of course, it's way better than the Trump administration. But when it comes to the American policy, it's a systematic, uh, consistent, and it's a strategic position towards Israel. This is something that we cannot, um, we, maybe we cannot change uh, in the right moment, but also we count on the uh, awareness of the American population. We count on the uh, uh, senators, we count on, on the actors, Activists. We count on the uh, people who really can raise awareness and who can do the change maybe on a different level rather than the government. We saw a number of uh, Arab countries um, establish diplomatic relations uh, with Israel uh, in the past year or so. Um, and I've been speaking to analysts who say that uh, part of the challenge for the Palestinian people now is that yours is becoming a struggle that's uh, being forgotten and that it's not really on a lot of people's agendas and as a result um your cause may be being forgotten and also that uh, you may be feeling a little isolated is that the case um, on the contrary, we are the Palestinian people are gaining a huge support. We don't have the support of the governments who really uh, established uh, diplomatic relations with with uh, Israel. How many governments? There are four, five, six, seven. It's okay. Uh, we have 22 Arab countries, and we have other uh, countries who support the cause of uh, Palestine. And regardless of these uh, six countries, you are talking only about the governments. As for the people, the people are. Uh, uh, still up to this moment, and we are sure of it, consider Palestine as their main and major uh, issue. And uh, the Arabs and the Muslims also do believe that, uh, and uh, freedom fighters all over the world believe that there will be no freedom for themselves if Palestine was not free, exactly as the Madiba uh, said. We count on this, and we do believe that our cause is a just cause, and we are standing for our principles we are doing no shifts rather to the left or to the right and that's uh, that this is the source of the palestinians and this is the power of the palestinians and i do want to to mention a major factor here is that in what's going on now in palestine is very much useful for the palestinian cause because it brings together all the palestinian dynamics one hand one shoulder facing an apartheid regime we saw the palestinians in inside israel which by by the way uh, enjoyed israeli citizenship stands together in with their Palestinian uh, brothers and sisters in West Bank, in Gaza Strip, and in East uh, Jerusalem. This is very much important to that all these things brings us together. We have a diaspora of that counts 7 million people. You can imagine that when Israel uprooted Palestinians in 1948, we were like 700,000 uh, individuals. Now we are 7 million individuals with no, with no right to, to return. All these individuals are uh, having Palestine in their hearts, in their minds, in their conscious and in their subconscious. That's why the Palestinian cause is alive. It will never die until we get to our homeland, until we get our rights as all human beings around the world. And I do believe that this is something um, not difficult, not impossible to ask the international community to support us in. The events of this week, have they made it much harder to talk about peace talks and finding a path to a two-state solution? It's never too hard to talk about peace because in the midst of all what we are in, 
we should always keep hope and we should always we are fighting for peace can you imagine that all this escalation at least from the palestinian side we are fighting to get peace that's why we engaged into the peace process we abandoned 78 percent of mandatory palestine for the sake of peace so it's never on the contrary for the people who understand uh, uh, the reality uh, every challenge is a chance in, in return so we do believe that it's also it's a challenge for Palestinians. We are the ones who are paying the bill of the Israeli escalation. But on the other hand, the, the, if there is a viable international uh, community, they will take it as a chance to pressure Israel. They will take it as a chance to bring Israel accountable for its deeds. They will take it as a chance to uh, pressure Israel to come into negotiation uh, uh, table. So there will always be a chance, even in the darkest uh, times. It's only, it's exactly like what happened with South Africa. I mean, it was a, a very dark moment when this X factor came and the international community come together in solidarity, impose sanctions and bring the apartheid regime accountable. That's why you are here uh, today. Uh, we are waiting for this moment and may maybe these uh, events might bring uh, uh, this moment into the table. Let's hope, let's pray. Hanan Jara, the uh, Palestinian ambassador to uh, South Africa, speaking to me a little bit earlier uh, in the week about uh, the situation that's uh, since escalated quite significantly. Casualties well over 100 now.